So this is going to be my attempt at doing more of a quick tip style of video. Hopefully I actually do keep this quick. I was hanging out in the Bamboo Studio Discord the other day and a user had a question about how to slice a file. And they had a part that was somewhat like this. It had a hole in the middle of it that they wanted to drop a magnet into. And what they were asking about was a way to make there be no bottom layers, specifically no top layers in the bottom of this hole. Now, his rationale he was saying was is he didn't care what it looked like because the magnet was going to cover it. Now, speed also, I think, would play into this as well because the top solid layers in a model usually are one of the slowest printing parts of a model and your subsequent coarse and solid infill layers are usually some of your fastest printing layers. So by eliminating that top solid down here, it speeds things up a little bit. So there's no way to remove just the top layer down in the bottom here because then the next layer underneath of it becomes a top layer. However, we can remove all of the layers in the bottom of this hole and make a bottomless hole. So we're going to take a look at two different ways to do this. And I'm going to start in Prusa Slicer 2.6 Alpha, largely because I like Prusa Slicer better. And there's two different ways that we can do this in Prusa Slicer. And then we'll jump over to Orca Slicer, the Bamboo Studio fork. And I'll show you how we can use one of the same processes that we use in Prusa Slicer over there. So we'll start by dragging in our part here and we'll take a look at it. And we'll just go ahead and slice this with the default profile to take a look. So we've got our top layers here and we got our top layers down the bottom there. We can see those because there are these red ones right here. And we can drag down through. And we can see down here in the bottom of our hole. Now one th real quick thing I want to point out. This again is this is the alpha version of 2.6. One thing they've changed is how they do bridging infill. Uh, instead of doing a circle at the bottom here like they've traditionally done, now they're doing this little method where they go back and forth and anchor the ending points of these lines over the top of other pieces of infill rather than letting them dangle out in the open error. This is really cool and I'm looking forward to using this a lot more, but I just kind of wanted to point that out. But once we get above that, we get into what we're used to seeing here, the circular pattern at the bottom of a circular hole. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to add a height range modifier. Now this particular technique is only possible in Prusa Slicer and its fork Super Slicer. Bamboo Studio has said that they are planning on implementing this and in fact really bringing it back because they removed it when they forked Prusa Slicer at some point in the future, but we don't know when that's going to be at the moment. So I can either right click on my part or I can come over here and right click on the part listed and we're going to select height range modifier and that's going to bring us in a default range of zero to two millimeters now we said that the top surface here of this hole is at five millimeters and if we look in our settings here we're seeing we're using five top layers at 0.2 millimeters so that means our thickness at the bottom of here is one millimeter. So we can start at five and we can go down to four to now target, oops, to target that area of the model, which is where the floor of this should be. And now we have this gear, which you can right click on and we get quick settings to access the most common infill and layers and perimeters or under add settings we get a lot more settings underneath of these but for right now we're just going to worry about those bottom layers there are top layers at the bottom of our hole which are five so we're going to change those to zero and because these two here have just pre-populated with it's already in our slicer settings I'm just going to delete those now if we slice we see we have a bottomless hole in our part that's going straight down into the infill. Now if we want to get a little fancier here what we can do is we can go back over to our gear and we'll go to infill 
and we can change our infill density from 20% to say, let's just say 50%. And then we'll slice again and we'll now see that at the bottom of our hole we have much more dense area. But because we are targeting that whole section from four to five millimeters, we get all that extra density through the whole part. And that really isn't necessarily, you know, serving our cause. So if we go back and we take off the density part, we'll see we're back here. Now this would work for what the guy was wanting to do about having a magnet set down in there. But let me show you the other way that we can do this. I'm going to take off our modifier by just deleting this layer right here. And this time we're going to add an object modifier. And we're going to use a cylinder. Now I said my hole was 10 millimeters across. So I'm now going to make, I'm going to unlock my cylinder. I'm going to make it 12 by 12. And I'm going to go 2 for the height. And because my hole, I had the forethought to put it in the very middle of my part, I also can go over here and change. This is also something that's new in 2.6. We have the ability to switch between world coordinates, object coordinates, and part coordinates. In the past, we only had object coordinates, but they're the ones that I usually find to be the most helpful in this kind of a situation anyway. So I'm going to select object coordinates, and I'm going to change this to zero zero and that's going to put our cylinder right in the middle of this part if we'd used the other two we would have been in relation to the entire build plate i'm just going to grab this and drag this down because i gave myself a little bit extra room so i see that green at the very bottom of the hole now i'm going to do the same thing i can come over here to my gear i can change my perimeters on the top to zero and we have our hole. But now if I go to infill and change this to 50, we're only affecting the area where that modifier overlapped. And because it's still overlapping this area here, it's overriding the density of the infill where that part is. So when we see it print, it's going to do the coarser infill. Then it's going to come in and do just that denser infill rather than trying to print those two on top of each other. So that's pretty cool. Now, another thing that we can do here, and this is really just kind of to show off more than anything, is we can also go underneath of these extra settings here to infill. And we can see we have a whole lot more settings available to us. And we can change our fill angle. The default's 45, but if we change this to say 0 or 90, which is going to spin the infill in here 90 degrees, we'll now see that our infill is 45 degrees from the outer infill. Now in this particular case, I don't think this is really adding anything to the ability to hold a magnet in here, but I primarily wanted to show this to you to see that you could actually target an area inside of a part and modify its infill density, its angle. We could even change the um, infill type to say gyroid and have gyroid infill in just that one little area inside the part. So that's a pretty cool and powerful thing that we can do with part modifiers. And this particular aspect of using a part modifier is also possible to do in Bamboo Studio in Orca Slicer. So let's hop over and we'll show you how to do that over there. So this is Orca Slicer, which is very similar to Bamboo Studio. There's just a few extra features that have been turned on. And so for me, it's just a little bit more usable, but this process is gonna work the same in either one of them. So again, we've got our part. Now we're gonna right click again, and we're gonna hit Add Modifier Cylinder. And when we do that, we're going to see over here in the left hand column, we're going to get our generic cylinder. It's now going to show up underneath this objects. I guess it's a tab. So these settings here apply globally to everything. And then when we click objects, now we can select individual objects on the build plate. 
and work with them individually. And then now down below here, we have a subset of all of the settings that are available under global that we can now change individually for these parts. We need to change the size here. We come up here to scale and our sizes pop up here instead of down here. But we're gonna turn off uniform. We're gonna do the 12, two, and then we're gonna move it over. Uh, it didn't take our two. There we go. And it is still, it calls them world coordinates. They're not because this moves. And when we move, this is still zero, zero, which means this number is relating to the part that it's in, not the world. So now we go over to our cylinder and we're gonna do the same thing by moving it down. So it's just covering the bottom of the hole. And now we're gonna come over to strength and we're gonna change those top shell layers to zero. And we can see there we lost the bottom of our hole. Now we'll come back over again. And this part kind of irks me a little bit because they put infill in the strength section. And to me, that should not be a strength thing because we get our strength from our perimeters and our shells, but that's okay. And we can see we've got that higher density infill in the bottom of our hole now over here. And we could go ahead and we could go down a little bit further here and we could change our infill direction here as well if we wanted to. Right there. All right, so now we've seen two different ways that this can be done in four different slicers. The height range modifiers work in Prusa Slicer and Super Slicer, and the object modifier that we just used here works in Prusa Slicer, Super Slicer, Bamboo Studio, and Orca Slicer. So I hope this quick tip was helpful and actually winds up being quick when I edit it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I also really would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If nothing more, just to let YouTube know that you thought this video was worth watching and hopefully they will recommend it to somebody else and they'll get to watch it. Thank you again and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.